What's up? Today I'm going to walk you through how I go about doing what I call a photo journal entry or a documentary style photography session where I might just be out exploring a new restaurant, a new city, um, most of the time with my wife and just taking photos and trying to tell some sort of story as we go along. Before we do though, hey, my name is Spencer. I've been a professional photographer for about eight years now, usually on the side of natural documentary, photojournalistic kind of nature. Um, the professional side of what I've done has been a lot of social media content, product photography, food photography, lifestyle kind of photography. But this channel is all things photography. So if that sounds cool to you, make sure to subscribe, snap that like button. I appreciate it. So basically last Saturday, my wife and I went to one of our favorite restaurants here in Roanoke called Bloom. And I decided to take photos of the little sort of morning out and try to tell some sort of story. So the first thing um, you'll find, and I'll probably make a video about this again in the future, more about my process in storytelling, the order in which I put my photos. Today, I just kind of want to walk through the photos I took, why I chose them, why they stuck out to me as compared to some other photos that didn't stand out to me. Um, all of this can be found on my website, spencerscottpugh.photos. And I have all of these photos there in a little photo journal, as I like to call them. So first here was one of the first photos I took, not the first, but it's an establishing shot um, just of the Wasina neighborhood sign. I thought this is a great way to start, you know, the gallery off because, you know, my wife and I are walking through Wasina, heading to the restaurant and seeing photos as we go. Just another sort of establishing shot. These are the types of houses, right, that are in Wasina. I've always loved this house. I think they kind of fixed it up and the sort of blue siding is pretty cool. So. <clears throat> You'll find my photography style to be very kind of um, point and snap, point and shoot, uh, because I try not to let the photos get too in the way of what I'm doing, especially as a family man, as a, um, a dad. I don't have a ton of time to compose setup shots. I try to do things on the fly and see how they turn out in post. So I end up taking a lot of photos, uh, probably a film photographer's nightmare, the amount of photos I take. But again, just sort of walking through, here's my wife. Um, she is pregnant, which we'll see here in a second. So this is actually a friend's bakery. I love architecture shots. I, I especially love light as most photographers do. So you'll see, you know, there's a, there's a lot of interesting light going on here, um, which I can show, you know, this photo was probably a little bit uh, tilted. In fact, I know it was, so I had to sort of adjust it that way. The subject here is really just the building itself. Our friend, our neighbor actually owns this building right here. But I just love the way the light was dancing off this. She's got her little sign out front because she was uh, open that morning, which we did get to go in there after we ate our breakfast. Here, I thought this was interesting. I haven't done a lot of playing with um, reflections in my photography, but I've, I've seen a lot of people doing it, a lot of people I follow on Instagram, and it's a cool, interesting idea. And so this was very interesting to me because it seemed almost like this, this bar, this table was like outside, but it was inside, the window was really clean, and you know, you do have the subject here, which again, I've centered, is this plant, and I'll play on this plant in the coming photos as well. So again, my wife is pregnant, um, so I did want to take pictures of her. We got all dressed up. This was kind of our Valentine's um, date for one another, and so getting pictures of her just being amazing. I think that <clears throat> this sort of light uh, situation right here where this light's coming down was kind of cool. It kind of frames her in a way, um, and then her, her arm kind of mirrors that as well. So there, there was a lot I did like about this. You can see it's not completely you know, uh, justified or straight. I think that's fine. Um, a lot of times a tilting of a camera can can bring about, especially in film, right? Some sort of like uneasiness or like mental thing going on. But I think in photography, especially um, more street documentary style, like this is to be expected. You're shooting very quickly, trying to capture the story instead of getting like the perfect, you know, composed shot. So I really like this image. Um, I thought it was great. I think my wife looks great. So here's another one where I centered the bloom um, sign. I don't know, I just thought it was cool. I took two of these. This one turned out to be my favorite. I took one from the other side as well. All right, so an another reason I took this 
you know, we're, we're at the restaurant, now we're gonna head inside, right? So I, I move photos around, um, which is part of that storytelling. But here was just, as I was sitting down at my seat, looking around the restaurant, we were one of the first ones in there. That day it was a brunch. So just getting pictures of like these colors, I was really excited. This is a film simulation on my Fujifilm X-T4 that I hadn't used yet. Um, so I was excited to see how it performed and I love the way these images turned out. They're straight out of camera. Um, no editing other than like um, tilting, correcting, centering, and a crop. So this was interesting to me because this film simulation is pretty yellow tinted and inside it becomes even more yellow but I still decided to leave it because it was a certain look and feel and I love what it was doing to this like bluish teal that's in the restaurant. But you can kind of see like he was already in this incandescent light. He's pretty orange. It made him even more orange so. But you know what, I think when you have a certain look and feel you're going for throughout, the eye sort, sort of adjusts to like, wow, he's really orange, but you might not notice it because all the photos are sort of done the same way, right? And in film, in the old days, you couldn't always change color, right, of someone's skin tone. If, if that's what the film presented, that's what you got kind of thing. So I love the idea of shooting JPEG and I'll be talking about that way more in the future. So this was an interesting image to me. Um, this is actually one of my coworkers. <laughs> right here and um, so I just like the way they look sort of silhouetted against this uh, at the at that same bar where that plant is and that plants actually right there uh, kind of hard to see but I love the way they were sitting I took some more where there was like more of a person's head blocking right here but it was kind of just taking a little bit too much away from them sitting here I love these bottles that kind of draws your attention away from to me that's the subject but I don't know I don't mind, and, and I, I like them, so I have some bias to this image um, as well, but you know, still keeping that blue, which I thought was super cool. So as you can see, as we're going along here, I'm just sort of flowing through what was happening, still looking around, seeing what was going on. Um, this next series of images is a series, and sort of, I took them out of order, but I put them in this order for a certain reason. But you can see, I just loved the light that was pouring in. There, you, you can see this too. Like they didn't have, um, let's see. They didn't have any of these lights on. Um, I don't even think any of the lights were on except for in the kitchen because this natural light was coming through and it was lighting everything really, really nicely. And I don't know, I think it looked lovely. I loved it. Um, it made for some awesome pictures. All of these pictures were taken with that natural light and there's a little bit of like, you know, that backlight kind of thing too, which I'll say too, and I'll point this out in another photo as well, but like these lights do a lot for some of the photos coming up, which is cool. Just to add that sort of little bit of extra artificial light. So this light hitting off these chairs was really interesting to me. I zoomed in again and really got that uh, contrast going on. This isn't a great image, right? I mean, there's nothing, it's not like, wow, it's incredible, but I just liked the light play. I liked all of the um, different sort of angles we have going on here. So you've got the chairs and all these angles, right? And then you've got the light also kind of doing an angular thing. And then these, like, there was just a lot of like busyness, but very straight edges going on. And then, you know, there's not a lot going on down there, but. <clears throat> I like the way the light was playing. So I snapped a picture and I kept it in the gallery. This was fun, um, just sort of, you know, showing off the bar. And as I sort of mentioned before, you do have these uh, artificial lights back here, which are adding a pretty cool element. Um, I had another picture, this exact same picture, but the bartender was right here and he was kind of uh, blurred a little bit, but not blurred as much as I wanted him to be. And so he was actually distracting because to me, the subject of this image was just trying to show off this stuff, right? These straws are kind of the hero of the image and then these things, and then all these drinks obviously back here are sort of um, out of focus. And so you have some layers, a uh, certain amount of depth. Um, but this was the main subject for me and having the bartender there was just kind of taking away from that. So just more sort of establishing detail shots of this restaurant. It's our favorite restaurant. This is one of my favorite images from the day as well. I don't really know why. The guy's out of focus. Again, it's just that lighting, um, the blur of that guy. Like, who is he? He's kind of mysterious. 
little, little anonymous, but I just love the light coming through that curtain. I thought it was pretty cool. Here's my wife, right, reading the menu. What's interesting is all of these shots are backlit. I mean, there's some light coming from behind the camera, but most of the main sort of key light is coming from behind the subject, which I don't usually recommend. It's kind of hard to take good photos in that way, and you'll find it gets real grainy. ISO starts to pop up quite a bit more as I zoom in on food items, but I think it's really cool in this instance. Again, this film simulation is awesome. Another detail shot of my wife. So this is my first drink. These food photos and drink photos aren't my favorite of all time, but again, I'm just sort of sitting in that same seat, just sort of documenting what I'm seeing as I go along. This drink was absolutely delicious. Salad was amazing. I think this is probably one of the better food photos that I took. I love the way the light's playing off the leaves. Um, I just, I don't know. I think, I think this is one of my favorite. The way, I, I think I cropped this maybe a little bit. It's always hard because I think, you know, especially when you're first starting out taking photography, like pr of product, um, product photography images, you're, you're trying to get the whole product, right? But really the hero of the dish is this. It's not, you know, you can, you can shoot this as many ways as you want, but having this sort of cut off here is, is interesting. You know, my wife's hands back here, she's ready to eat with her fork. This is another dish that's about to come up. This is probably a little distracting, but it's just showing the table full. And I, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm trying, I guess I'm trying to get like a little too detailed into what's really happening here. It's not anything impressive. I just, you'll see, this is probably my favorite just because of the composition and everything else going on in the shot. And you have that same sort of backlight lighting the table, lighting like the back of these leaves. I just thought it was super interesting. Um, so as we move on, those are the potatoes that were featured in the last image, right? This is not a great photo because my wife is kind of cutting off the light source to these potatoes entirely, except for the very sort of top of them, right? So like right here is getting all the light. And I actually showed this to my daughter who's two and a half and she said, um, I said, those are potatoes. And she says, they look like brownies. My daughter's really smart. And uh, I was like, yes. Yes, they do, or even like steak, <laughs> but I don't know. It, it's just, again, it's, it's fitting in that same gallery. If I was like hired to shoot a picture of these potatoes, this, was not, this would not be the way I would do it, right? I would probably sit where my wife's sitting, make sure to get the light perfect, probably not use this film sim. Um, but, you know, fitting in that space, playing with the light that's already there is the way I enjoy photography most. You know, filming this, I've got a key light right here burning into my face so that it's well lit for the video, but I don't know, photography is a little bit more fun. I like playing more so with natural light coming in. Again, not a great shot, but I loved the plant there, the plant in the background. Um, that was my wife's mocktail she got. First and foremost, this dish was just delicious. I love this photo. I don't have much more to say about it. I like that my wife's hand, again, is in the background. And just the, um, <clears throat> I like this as well. I had another image of this dish with, I think the, I think the, the dish is on the menu, like right here, and you could see the whole thing. I thought that was cool, but I didn't really like the composition. But I do like that the menu is sort of sitting under the dish. I think that's a nice touch. It adds some depth and some contrast. It, it, it puts another step in between the plate and the table, which is cool. Um, love that. Here's another drink. I chose to go really close up here, and then I, you know, I had the the window light in the background really burning into the ground and kind of taking your attention away, probably, but it didn't really bother me. Did sort of the same thing here. This dish was brilliant. This dish wasn't amazing to look at. I wanted to take a picture of everything we got just for the idea of the photo journal, right? To have this story. Dessert, brilliant. Um, this is interesting because. Our friend who owes the bakery, or our neighbor, um, she actually supplied this, which was a delicious like muffin kind of thing. The ice cream was incredible, and at first, taking this image, I made the ice cream the subject, but then I was like, wait, this is for our friend, and her thing is this, right? So I wanna promote that, so I changed the focus to the muffin itself, and I just think, you know, in, in a way, the muffin is more enticing than the ice cream blob. 
the ice cream scoop. Amazing looking dish though, um, and it was delicious, fantastic, so love that. Here we get into sort of the final images of the series here. This is kind of, I don't know, more of a, a street photography kind of style here. Like I'm finding interesting things going on, um, trying to at least, and having my wife's face face this way, and it's not the subject, the subject is actually this lady's face right here. But her face is also facing this way and my wife's facing this way. And then you have some like more of this kind of these angles going on. Then you make up this little window of light right here where all of this is in darkness. Um, I, I thought this was a pretty interesting play on an image. And sh though you can see her nose, her mouth, her chin, her hair, even her glasses, she's still pretty anonymous in this image. And so I liked this, I thought it was really cool. My wife's actually pretty like distinguishable right here uh, with her features, uh, but she's not the subject and you don't immediately see my wife's face even when you look at this. So I loved this picture, I thought it was cool. And I do the same thing to this woman's husband who's sitting next to her. I use, or just sort of happily, I wasn't like trying to do this, I was definitely trying to hide not hide behind my wife, but use my wife as somewhat of a, um, what would you call it? Framing technique, right? So she has this, which is framing him up. And then this is a happy little mistake or happenstance. Someone was walking, a server was walking by with a dish and actually like kind of gave him this like censored eye line, which I thought was pretty interesting. And you can't, you can't tell who he is unless you really know him or something as well. And I, lo I love that. This image was a little bit wider and I actually cropped it down to kind of get him in this sort of position here. And then there was much more space up here that I sort of just got rid of. I love this. And then I was able to wrap that up by showing both of their faces, which I thought was pretty cool. They were naturally hearing him tell a story and it was funny and uh, just capturing that there. And then again, my wife sort of um, helping frame. And then you do have kind of like four levels, right? You have my wife here in the foreground, foreground. We've got him, which is the main subject. We've got her, which is another level. Then you've got, I guess five. You've got the wall there and then you've got the window, so six. So this sort of layer, this was cropped in a little bit as well to get these different layers, but I thought this was really cool. I really enjoyed this photo as well. If I knew them, it'd be even greater. I'd love to give this to them. My wife actually knows their daughter and we talked to them for a second, but I was probably being kind of creepy taking their photo to begin with while they're trying to eat. But that's what it is, man. Street photography, right? Um, you're just capturing life. And this is definitely this sort of mix between street and product and photojournalistic and I don't, I don't even know what you would call it, but just photography, right? And that's what I love. So I think that was the last image. It was, uh, really enjoy doing this kind of photography. I always have, and it's kind of one of the main reasons why I decided to start this channel around photography. Photography always comes back. You know, there'll be seasons where I don't take as many photos, but then I always come back to it. And taking little adventures with my wife like this or going out for street photography sessions are just so fun for me. And then being able to explain why I enjoyed the image, I think is super fun. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. Do you wanna see more videos like this? Did I go too in depth? Did you enjoy this process? As I said before, this whole gallery is available on my website, which I'll link down below, spencerscottpugh.photos. Uh, I have an Instagram, spencerscottpughphotos as well, which you can follow if you'd be interested in seeing some more of my photography. I appreciate you all very much. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Share it with someone you think would enjoy. Watch this video right here. I think you're gonna love it. And I will see you all next time.